agnostic or nothing in particular, when you ask them what their religion is, they are not saying Jewish, but they do consider themselves Jewish, and they have at least one Jewish parent. Now, when we look at the Jewish population as a whole in America today, this is one of the key findings of the survey. It's between a fifth and a quarter of American Jews today who fall into the category of Jews of no religion. That is, again, they don't. When you ask them what their religion is, they don't say Jewish. And when you look at the survey data, and this is not comparing this survey to any previous surveys. I can do some of that, but it's very complicated for methodological reasons, differences over time in the way the surveys are conducted, the way the questions are asked to make comparisons. It has to be done very carefully. But just in this survey alone, we can see evidence, I think we can see evidence, that the size of this group is growing. I don't know whether you all can see these numbers, so I'll read them out to you. In the greatest generation, the, world, the generation that fought the Second World War, my parents' generation, more than nine in 10 Jews in that generation were Jews by religion. If you ask them what their religion is, they tell you they're Jewish. Very few, just 7%, will tell you that they're atheist, agnostic, nothing in particular. In the boomer generation, my generation, it's almost one in five who have no particular religion or atheist and agnostic, yet consider themselves Jewish and have Jewish upbringing. In the millennial generation, the youngest generation of current adults, it's nearly a third, 32%. Now, by the way, these trends are very similar to what's happening in the general public in the United States. If you go back to as recently as the early 1980s, more than 95% of Americans identified with some religion. They, if you ask them what the religion was, they said something, Presbyterian, Baptist, whatever. It took 15 years to go from less than 5% to 10%. It took 10 more years to go from 10% to 15%, and just in the last five years, it's gone from 15% to 20% of the general population in the United States. One in five American adults today, when you ask them what their religion is, says atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular. And the atheist, agnostics are the smaller part of that. The nothing in particular is fully 14% of the American population today. So that's very, can that, and among millennials in the general population, what do you think it is? Give a guess. 35%? It's 32%, just the same as the Jews. So in that sense, some of these trends are happening. This isn't, don't necessarily think this is all about Jews. Jews live in America. We drink the water. We breathe the air. The, we're, we're part and parcel of these trends. So now, being Jewish in America, we've long recognized Jews have no problem with it. With, you can be not religious and be Jewish. That's an ancient, actually, part of Jewish tradition, and certainly a part of American Jewish tradition, the idea of being a secular Jew. It's not, it, you, most American Jews don't have a problem with it, and in fact, when we ask Jews in America, in our survey, what is being Jewish? What is it about? Is it mainly, we give them three choices, is it mainly a matter of religion, or is it mainly a matter of ancestry, or is it mainly a matter of culture? A majority, 62%, say it's a matter either of ancestry, mainly ancestry, or mainly culture, or ancestry and culture, and they don't even mention religion. A majority of Jews do not even mention religion. Even among those who identify their own religion as Jewish, 55% do not mention religion in what being Jewish is mainly. They say it's mainly a matter of culture or ancestry, and 17% say it's mainly a matter of religion, and 26% mention religion in the answer, but 55% don't even mention religion in the answer. So you could say to me, Alan, oh, geez, you know, okay, so we have this growing number of Jews of no religion. Who, that's not a problem. We don't have a problem with that. They're still Jewish. They have Jewish ancestry. They're part of Jewish community. We accept them. So what's the big deal? All right. Well, the, deal is that it turns out in the survey that by and large, and I'm not talking about individuals, I'm talking about groups of population, by and large, Jews by religion look different from Jews of no religion. Jews of no religion are less religious. Fully expect that. But they're not only less religious, they're also less connected less connected to Jewish institutions and to Jewish life in a variety of ways. So let's go through just a few questions in the survey. We asked Jews whether they're proud to be Jewish. Now think back to the 1920s when the sociologist said it's being a disability. I don't know what it would have been. Unfortunately, Don was not there to facilitate a survey in 1927, so I don't know, but I'm gonna suspect that it was not 97% of Jews by religion who in the 1920s would have said they're proud to be Jewish. 
So this is interesting. And Jews of no religion, overwhelmingly, 83% of them say they're proud to be Jewish. So not a big difference there. But do you have a strong sense of belonging to the Jewish people? Well, Jews of no religion are only half as likely as Jews by religion to say they have a strong sense of belonging to the Jewish people. Jews of no religion are half as likely as Jews by religion. Can you see these numbers? Do you know what I'm about? 36% of Jews of no religion say they feel a special responsibility to care for fellow Jews in need around the world. It's 71% of Jews by religion say they feel a special need to care for fellow Jews in need around the world. Jews by religion, 39% of Jews by religion belong to synagogues. Among Jews of no religion, 4%. Like I said, they're less religious, not surprising. But also, only 4% of Jews of no religion belong to any other Jewish organization. And Jews by religion, 67% of them have donated to a Jewish cause in the past year, compared to 20% of Jews of no religion. So Jews by religion are more than three times as likely to have donated to a Jewish cause. All right, it gets more interesting. This is a tricky slide. I'm gonna call these numbers out to you. Maybe you can't see them. But this is one of the most important slides in the whole survey. It has to do with how people are raising their children. So we asked the respondents in the survey, who are parents or guardians of minor children in the home, how are you raising your children? And we gave them a whole lot of options. They could say a lot of different things. Among the Jews by religion, 71% said they are raising their children Jewish by religion. That is, they're raising their children in the Jewish faiths. An additional 15% said they're raising their children at least partly Jewish, in the, partly in the Jewish faiths. And an additional 7% said they're either raising their children as cultural Jews, that is Jewish but not by religion, or some mix. Maybe they're mixed marriage and tr some children one way and other children another way. But altogether, 93% of the Jews by religion in the survey who have minor children in the home are raising their children Jewish in some way. Now, of those Jews of no religion, 8% are raising their children Jewish by religion. An additional 11% are raising their children partly Jewish by religion, an additional 11% in some mix, and fully two-thirds are not raising their children Jewish at all. And when I say that, I don't mean they're not raising their children in the Jewish faith. They're not raising their children in the Jewish faith or as cultural Jews. They're not raising their children Jewish at all. So it begs a pretty obvious question. That rising proportion of the Jewish population that is Jews of no religion, will they transmit Jewish identity to their children? Maybe, but it raises a question. Now, intermarriage is a very complicated matter, but it is clearly related to this issue of Jews by religion, Jews of no religion, and to the question of how they're raising children. You can think of it, we describe it in our report, as a kind of circular reinforcing mechanism. And some of the correlations, I'm not gonna say causes, because it's very hard to prove what causes what, but some of the associations or correlations are that people who are intermarried are more likely to be Jews of no religion. Children of intermarriage are more likely to be Jews of no religion. Children of intermarriage are themselves more likely to intermarry. And so that's where you begin to see the, the circle. Now, what about intermarriage? And here we want to be really careful, and I've got to show you both sides of the coin, because I am not trying to speak out against intermarriage here. Among Jews in our survey who have minor children in the home and who have a Jewish spouse, so in married couples, 96% are raising their children in the Jewish religion. Among those who are intermarried, 20% are raising their children in the Jewish religion. An additional 25% are raising their children partly Jewish by religion. An additional 16% in some mix. So add those numbers up, 63% or a majority of the intermarried couples are raising their children Jewish in some way. A majority are raising them Jewish in some way. But 37% are not raising their children Jewish at all, by religion, aside from religion, at all. And that is a big contrast with the 96% of in-married Jews who are raising their children in the Jewish faith. Now, intermarriage seems to be rising. And again, not comparing this survey to any previous survey, but just looking at the data in this survey alone, we asked people who are married, 
what's the religion of your spouse? And we also asked, when did you get married? Now, this is only of current intact marriages. We didn't ask people about their divorces, <laughs> their previous spouses, and that sort of thing. That can tend to have people hang up on you, and we don't really want that in a survey. Um, overall, 56% of Jews are in married. Current, of all Jews who are married today, 56% are in married. Now, if you think about it, remember, Jews are 2% of the population. If you're Jewish and you're getting married and you throw a dart at a phone book, you have a 1 in 50 chance of hitting, if the phone book is represented to the general public, of a fellow Jew. Yet, more than half of all Jews who are married are married to fellow Jews. So there's a lot of selection, positive selection for Jews. So people are going to tell you, oh, intermarriage, it's out, you know, out of control. Uh, whatever the rates of intermarriage are, still, Jews are positively selecting and marrying fellow Jews at much greater than would be the kind of random rates that would happen in the United States. But we ask Jews who are uh, married and who got married before 1970, about their spouses, just 17% of those who got married before 1970 are married to non-Jews. Of those who've been married, who got married in the 1980s, four in 10 are married to non-Jews. Of those who've gotten married since 2000, it's pushing six in 10 are married to non-Jews. Now, to me, it's putting the thumb on the scale. I don't like to do it, but Stephen Cohen, who was one of our advisors and a wonderful, brilliant sociologist of religion, he likes to take the Orthodox Jews out of the equation. Why? Because there's virtually no intermarriage among the Orthodox. 98% of Orthodox Jews are married to Jews. It's almost like if you're Orthodox and you marry out, you're no longer an Orthodox Jew, so it's kind of a little bit of a tautological situation perhaps, but if you take these numbers and you take the Orthodox out of them, then it's going to be since 2000, 72% of Jews who've gotten married since 2000 have married non-Jews in the United States. All right, I'm sorry I'm dazzling you with numbers here. It's like a little math lesson, but some of this gets to be pretty interesting. Intermarriage is rising. What's the consequence of it? Lots of more children of intermarriage. This chart is showing of all Jewish adults in America, what's their parentage? and showing it by generation. So we don't have enough to go back to the greatest generation. But in the silent generation, 92% of Jews in that generation had two Jewish parents. In the boomer generation, 75, three quarters have two Jewish parents. Even in generation X, it's almost three quarters have two Jewish parents. But in the current generation of young American adults, it's even Stephen, half of one Jewish parent, and half of two Jewish parents. Why doesn't it add up to 100%? Well, because there are Jews by choice. People who've converted in, people who are Jewish and have no Jewish parents, right? But 48% of millennials have one Jewish parent. Millennial Jews, those who identify as Jewish in the millennial generation, half have one Jewish parent and half have two Jewish parents. And a really interesting thing is happening. Again, I'm trying to show you both sides of the coin of intermarriage and of these trends in America. Back in the day, People who had one Jewish parent tended not to be Jewish as adults. And one way we can see that is that among Jews over the age of 65 in our survey who have one Jewish parent, now this is, sorry, I said over the age, I said Jews over the age, this is not just Jews, this is of anyone in the general public in the United States who had one Jewish parent, among those who had one Jewish parent over the age of 65, 75% of them are not Jewish, which means they positively identify, the vast majority of them are Christian, but they identify with some other faith where they say they're not Jewish by religion or aside from religion. Among 50 to 64 year olds, it drops to 63%. Even among 30 to 49 year olds though, a majority of those who had one Jewish parent were not Jewish. But look at the millennial generation, the 18 to 29 year olds. It's a majority of the people in that generation, in the general public who had one, parent who identify as Jewish today as adults. Now about half of them identify as Jews of no religion and about half of them identify as Jews by religion. But you can see here perhaps the rising desirability of being Jewish in America. In fact some sociologists would look at this and they say being Jewish is hot in America. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a cool it's cool. 
Okay, a couple people asked me uh, previously about Jews and socioeconomic status. It's just what you think. Uh, Jews have higher incomes and better education on average than the general public. In fact, in the general public, uh, it's, it's um, about 29 percent, you know, one in three approximately Americans uh, who are college graduates. It's twice as high. It's 58 percent among Jews. Uh, in the general public, it's 8 percent of American adults who live in households with incomes of $150,000 or more. It's better than three times that's 25% of Jews. Now there is, there is a low income segment in the Jewish population. In fact, 20% of American Jewish adults report household incomes of $30,000 a year or less. So that's a not inconsiderable figure. It's a lot lower than the figure in the general public. It's a not inconsiderable figure. So I'm not saying <clears throat> all Jews are rich, but the socioeconomic status of Jews is considerably higher than that of the general public in the United States. Now, now, a couple of important demographic things. Jews are older than the American public, and reform Jews, along with conservative Jews, are a lot older, on average, than orthodox Jews. So the median age of adult reform Jews is 54, of conservative Jews, 55. It's about 15 years higher than the median age of orthodox Jewish adults. And this is based only on adults. In the general population, it's 46. Among Jews as a whole, it's 50. All right? Now, why is the median age of Orthodox so young? It's because they're having babies at a much higher rate. They get married younger, so the generations are smaller, and fertility is much higher. The Orthodox, among Orthodox respondents in our survey, who are between the ages of 40 and 59, the average has 4.1 children. Among conservative Jews, it's 1.8. Among reform, it's 1.7. So they have, the Orthodox on average, have more than double. Now, I want you to see two big demographic trends here. On the one hand, growth at what you might think of as the secular or low religiosity end of the spectrum. Those Jews of no religion, less religious, less connected, growing numbers. Orthodox, much younger, higher fertility, growth at the orthodox end as well. What's shrinking, and I think you'll see this in the survey, what's under demographic pressure is the traditional middle of American Judaism, including particularly the conservative movement, but also some pressure on what you might, what parts at least of the uh, reform movement. Now overall, reform is still the largest denomination within Judaism. If you simply ask American Jewish adults, with what stream or denomination of Judaism do you identify, if any? A third say reform. 18% say conservative, which is what it, lower than what it was in previous surveys a decade or two decades ago. Orthodox, about 10%, which is not that different. It's a little